So here we have an object model diagram uh, that sort of describes the different types of transportation vehicles that we might uh, encounter in our software or in our library. And that. So I just want to have enough diversity to get some concepts across. And so first we'll start with it. We have everything is a type of object in Java. And so we def decided to define a transportation vehicle. Maybe it's a concrete class, maybe it's an abstract class, but it's the generic concept of some type of uh, uh, vehicle moving something. Could maybe people, maybe cargo. And so a subtype of transportation vehicles is rail vehicle. So rail, ve rail vehicle extends transportation vehicle. So maybe we're talking uh, the SkyTrain, maybe we're talking West Coast Express, maybe we're talking BC Rail, CN, and so those all do different things. Or maybe it's one of the service vehicles that can hop onto the track, right? Railroad vehicle, who knows? But it's that sort of concept. We also have over here, road vehicle. And, uh, and on a road vehicle, maybe it's a truck, because they're a little bit different, maybe it's a car, maybe it's a bike. And, you know, is it a motorbike? Is it a pedal bike? Who knows? We, we could keep further subdividing types if we wanted to. And then we'll go over here. Maybe it's an aired vehicle. So what we're talking about here, maybe a cargo plane, right? And so, like uh, FedEx, they have lots of planes. All they ship is cargo. No people. Or is it a passenger plane? Maybe it's a helicopter, right? Maybe we need to get to Victoria fast so uh, we can take a helicopter over uh and land right in the inner harbor. Or if it's a passenger plane, you know, is it an otter, a beaver, that it's a float plane that can land on the water, or maybe it's a wheeled plane, and that sort of thing. And so we have enough diversity here in subtypes that we can kind of get into the concept of generics and wild cards and what those mean. So if we do something called an upper bound, right, so that means our method would have something, uh, would be like question mark, extends, air vehicle. So that means we can accept as a parameter an air vehicle or anything that extends air vehicle. Okay, And so that means upper bound, that's as high as we can go up the tree. But we, all these are valid below us because they extend us. right? So you have, to ex, you have to be an object that extends air vehicle or an air vehicle yourself. And all those can come into our method and we can handle dealing with those and that. Now if we do a lower bound, that's different. So here I say, well, I'm going to do a lower bound on car. That means truck is not going to work and bike's not going to work either. But anything that's a super of a car in this case, right? So anything that's a super of car, road vehicle, transportation vehicle, object, we can handle those as well. Now I have my issues about, about, uh, lower bounds is because, you know, if this thing at the top, the object ever creeps in, then who knows what you really have. Uh, it could be anything. But there might be a thing that uh, if you encounter a car, and because it it's super is road vehicle and transportation vehicle, you might be able to handle that car as one of those other types, and it may work in your method. I just find from a practical point of view, I, I haven't had much use for a lower bound. Upper bounds and and an exact bound to a specific type has always helped me with array list. But this is just, just to give us an idea or a feel of what, what they mean by upper, lower, and how that works with extends and super. For now, this concludes this video.